Uh, welcome veterans, this is uh, Dennis Young again with the Veterans Memorial Park and Digital Library. We are here at day four at the VFW National Convention in Kansas City, Missouri. Having a great time. And the young man that's in front of me, I've known him now for quite a while. His name is Mike Milam. And Mike, can you spell your last name for me? It's M-I-L-A-M -M, as in All right. Mike. Alright, thank you so much. And sir, so we're going to go back in time a little bit because okay. we want to know a little bit about you besides that. Okay. And you know the whole purpose of doing these interviews is to capture your story. Even if it's just a little smidget of you, okay. it's something that 50 years from now, because these don't go away once we post them, hopefully not, 50 years from now somebody will be able to look you up, a great grandchild or something like that, and right. want to know who, who my grandpa was or whatever. And they'll look it up and, you know, it might only be a little smidgen, but it'll be something about you and your military career that made you important. So let's start back a little bit from the beginning and tell us a little bit like where you went to school, where you grew up, your parents, and then how you got in the military. All right. Yeah, well, we moved around quite a bit when I was younger, mostly, of course, in the Dayton, Xenia, Middle, uh, uh, Kettering area and so forth. They ended up in Springboro. So I graduated from Springboro High School in 79. Uh, that same year, I went into the Navy, uh, turned 18 while I was in boot camp, married my high school sweetheart all in that same year, uh, then went on to uh, Millington, Tennessee for A school. I was there about a year and a half. I went to after the advanced first term avionics uh, and all that stuff, and then ended up going out to Coronado Island uh, in San Diego for FRAMP school, VS-41, uh, to go to radar school for the S-3A Vikings, anti-submarine warfare, and then uh, First deployment was with VS-28 on the Independence during the Iran hostage crisis. Uh, ended up making two more sets of workups and deployments on the Independence, so I deployed three times uh, in that three years. Uh, spent six years in the Navy and got out in 1985. Well, that's about the time we got married, 1985. Yeah, yeah. So you got your uh, um, qualifications for the VFW and those three tours you did yep, on so, the ship? Yep, okay. so, so I have three expeditionary medals, uh, two Navy and one Armed Forces, uh, one for the Iran hostage crisis. Uh, uh, the Armed Forces was either for Granada, because uh, we went to Granada in 83, yep. and we also were there when the Marine, after the Marine Corps barracks got blown up, and also in 83. It was in Beirut, right? Yeah, in Beirut. You're right, you're right. So, and my second deployment was, of course, we were bombing Libya and, of course, Beirut, Lebanon, all that stuff. So, so yeah, I ended up with two Navy expeditionaries and one Armed Forces expeditionary. Okay, good, yeah. good. So, any good stories you'd like to tell, funny stories that you tell when you were in the service, maybe, for those six years? Um, Something that kind of sticks in your head and you kind of talk about once in a while. Uh, no, I mean, I mean we, we, we back in the day, of course, uh, East Coast ship, but we was, because of the Iran hostage crisis, we got to cross the equator and go to Australia. So we did the whole shellback initiation, which was pretty neat. Um, nothing really sticks out, you know, it was all, you know, like I said, it's not a job, it's an adventure. All right, that's so, true. So, you know, got to see a lot of stuff. Uh, that first deployment, I actually circumnavigated, well, went around the whole world. I didn't circumnavigate the whole thing, but, but because the boat was already out, I flew out of the West Coast. California, Alaska, Japan, the Philippines, Diego Garcia flew to the Kiska, the next day flew to the Independence, and then my last, uh, and then of course came back through the Suez Canal and back across the Atlantic, so I had gone all the way around the world. Uh, now you keep calling these things a boat. Now you know they're called a ship. So, so <laughs> well, I was. Gotta give you a hard time about that. So you were on the Independence, and what other ones? Just the. I made all three deployments on the Independence. On the Independence. Yeah, cool. with, I was with VS twenty eight uh, anti submarine warfare S threes, and a lot of times you have different squadrons will go to different ships for their deployments. I happen to go to all three. We're on the Independence. Uh, and and most, what kind of ship is that? Is it an aircraft carrier? Air? No, no, aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. Okay. Yeah, right, right. So it yeah, worked on the flight deck one deployment and then the next two I worked in AIMD. I worked on the radar. So most people in a three-year sea duty thing might make one deployment. I hit it at the wrong time and I ended up making three deployments. Wow. So, so yeah, plus workups. Yeah, so in that 36 month of a sea duty tour I was probably gone 30 months. Okay. So my math is right. You went from seventy nine to eighty five. Correct. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Six years then. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So get out in eighty five. What would you do next? Get out in eighty five. Service copy machines uh, for the next twenty years. You know, and, and uh, uh, up until about two thousand seven, um, went a little crazy. A little drug and alcohol issues. Ended up in Mexico. <laughs> Tell the girl living at my house I'm going to Mexico for four days, and I stayed down there for two years. 
you know, so I lived in a tent in these people's backyard for a year. And then I met a guy who was a gangbanger uh, and was a heroin addict, recovering, and uh, he basically saved my life. He said, you know, come live here, I'm going to save your life. And he did, you know, so got me back in touch with my family. And in August of 2010, I walked across the border in Tijuana with all the other Mexicans, you know, and uh, I had a T-shirt, a uh, clean pair of socks and clean pair of underwear in my bag, but no paperwork, no, I had an ID. Um, I had warrants in Florida, so, so, but my license was still good, even though it was suspended. And the guy at the border said, uh, you don't have any papers? And I said, no, sir. And of course, asked me where I'd been, how long I'd been there. And I said, oh, a couple of weeks, visiting friends in Ensenada. And he's like, oh, you're from Florida and you've been in Ensenada. Now where are you going? I said, Ohio. And so, so he's looking, he said, no papers? Um, no, sir. And he finally says, have a nice day. And he waves me through. And uh, so I cr walked across the border and of course came back to Ohio. Uh, fixed all my legal issues and, and that type of thing. And uh, here we are 12 years later and three years I'll be the Department of Ohio Commander. You know, so life is good and I've been really blessed. Uh, got a great job as a county veteran service officer. Worked for the VFW as a service officer for five years. No, so it's got you. What are you doing now? So yeah. you're telling us what you're doing. Yeah, good. yeah. so I've been a district commander uh, uh, for uh, Ohio for District 4. I'm a post quartermaster. Uh, and I told him, I said, you guys realize I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict, right? You want me to be the quartermaster? <laughs> and they said, yeah, that's okay. You'll do a great job. So I've been quartermaster for uh, probably six or seven years. At my post, I've been the national home chairman for six years, for seven years, uh, for the Department of Ohio. Um, president of our writers group. I'm the state vice president of the writers group. Yeah, and that's about it. Not too much. Well, that's not totally it. You are the state judge advocate. Yeah, I am the state okay. of Ohio and judge you, advocate. And you, in a few years, are going to, actually three years. Three years, yeah. Which is pretty awesome because you're going to be the state commander of Ohio, and we yes. are going to have the first female national commander right. at the yes. same time frame you become state commander. Right, and also that same year. It will be in Columbus, the Ohio at the time. It will be in Columbus, Ohio, and that same year will also be the 100th anniversary of our National Home for Children. Oh, well, now, I see, I didn't know today, that. So, yeah. Tell me something new today. Yeah, so, yeah. Outstanding. So, what are your plans for the future here at the state? What kind of things are you looking at? And, and I know you're planning now. I can't believe that you would not be planning for what's going to happen when you come state commander. Because you got to be. You got to so, be thinking yeah, ahead. Looking so, ahead, what kind of your yeah. thoughts of what you yeah, want to do and do? Looking ahead, um, just hoping to make the Department of Ohio better, make the VFW better. I don't have any grand plan of, of reinventing the wheel or uh, so, something like that, you know. Um, make better what we have. Just make better what we have. Make it, Have it be better when I go out than when I came in. You know, work hard, do my best. Uh, I have lots of energy. Uh, as people know, <laughs> I'm easily excitable. <laughs> You know, so. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so, so I have lots of energy. So yeah, just to work hard and uh, and make it better. Yeah, yeah. Outstanding. Anything else you would like to say to anyone listening to this? Any veterans you'd like to say something to? Troy. Right. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, it's all no, right. no, no. I just you know thank everybody for their service and uh, you know uh, you know do your best, work hard. What do you think about membership? So well. Membership, obviously, that's what they harp on all the time. Membership is very important. I'm a true believer, of course, being president of the uh, vice president of the writers group and so forth. Uh, you can't uh, be a good writers group if you're not a good VFW member. You can't the, you can't separate it. You're the writers group supports the VFW. So uh, I know people that are in the writers groups that don't have anything to do with their post, their department, their district, and I just believe that that's wrong. But membership. And people who never get out of their post and do nothing with the district uh, or department and just learn more about the VFW, that's what's so important about coming to conventions and even in the department and district. Um, but membership is so important because it's those numbers that get us influence in Congress and stuff. And they're always trying to take our benefits. And it's by our membership numbers, which makes a big blo voting block, that gives us power in Congress and the Senate, etc. when our leaders, our national commander in chief goes up there and speaks. So it's all of us behind him that gives him, that gets their attention with the VA and VA benefits in Congress. So so membership, it, it's not just about how many you have in your post or whatever, but the VFW as a whole is important because that's where we get our strength. All right, so I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot mm -hmm. here. I'm going to ask you this, if I'm not a member of the VFW, and my whole thought of the FW is a bunch of old guys sitting around drinking at the bar, 
Tell more stories. Yes. Um, I know that that is not a true statement, but right, right. how would you approach me? And because you're in a place of influence now, I sure, mean, sure. and I, you know, I'm happy to know you. I truly am. And actually, everyone that's on the staff right now, I think, are going to do a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, what? How would you tell me, as somebody who's not a member of the VFW, what some good that? That the convince me to join right right so so of course the vfw is reaching out to the younger people the younger veterans and members uh and, and of course you have to have things that you know when you take on the veteran you you get the whole family it's a package deal so you have to be open to the kids and the spouses male or female as i the one thing i've noticed here at this convention is a lot of younger people and women veterans are taking the higher leadership roles it, with Carol of course going to be our state commander in a few years uh, but even just looking around district commanders department commanders a lot are, are, are females a lot are younger uh, but but you have to be open to the whole family and and, and and of course the VFW with their scholarships that they offer or of course our riders group motorcycles bring in younger people um, you know so but it just has to be kind of take on the whole thing not just the veteran but you know I mean our benefits these days are so fantastic um, between uh, the VA I was never promised a lifetime of free health care from the VA and that's just a blessing now to have I never knew I could be service connected for 30 years when I got out in 85 they said nothing about that so but now in Ohio we have such great access to VA health care there's six VAs right in our area in southwest Ohio uh, County Veteran Service Officers in every county to file your claims for free so so and that includes caregiver and all these other benefits for the family and and education and stipends you know and, and of course the VFW has scholarships and things there's just so many things you almost can't keep up with everything cool yeah. outstanding yeah. all right Mike thank you so much for coming today yes, you told me you were gonna be here and you kept your word yeah I do appreciate it and again as I've told you before I love talking to you and I'm glad to see you here. Great. thank you so much